And it's about time we've discussed the idea behind Dyson spheres once again. Although to be more specific, we're going to be discussing Dyson swarms. The still hypothetical concept behind the production of enormous amount of energy for some kind of an advanced civilization out there. The idea that's several decades old and is technically based on what's known as Kardashev scale. The scale that tries to define various advanced civilizations based on the amount of energy they seem to require. This was initially outlined in 1964 in the study you see right here. And the idea was that as the civilization gets more and more complex, it essentially starts to require more and more energy. And though initially humans only started with fire, requiring fire for cooking, which unlocked a tremendous amount of nutrients we could now provide ourselves with, with time we started building other things, for example windmills, then power plants, then nuclear plants, fields of solar panels, and of course hydroelectric dams. But even now we're still technically on the Kardashev scale 1. We're basically just 0.7. In other words, we're still using the energy from planet Earth and have not perfected its use yet. But according to Kardashev, with time, a civilization would require even more energy and possibly the energy from the star itself. And at this time, it might start constructing something like this. Some kind of a sphere or a ring or possibly an orbiting swarm they can basically capture as much energy from the star as possible. And we've discussed this concept somewhat recently because one of the previous studies basically discovered that if we were to build this in a solar system, the planet Earth would most likely would just become too hot for life to exist. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And we'll actually discuss some of the additional concepts in regards to this in one of the future videos in the next few months, so make sure to subscribe if you'd like to find out more. But in essence, today, researchers that believe these structures exist think that they can only be basically something like this. They can only be some kind of a swarm because everything else would be just a little bit too unstable. For example, any kind of a ring would most likely collapse within just a few years and an actual sphere or a collection of rings resembling a sphere would be just too unstable because the gravity from the star would disturb it so much it would be incapable of maintaining itself for more than a day. But technically, by having a swarm with each of the satellites orbiting individually, it might become possible to create something like this. And here we're talking about millions or even billions of individual satellites, in total representing a mass of a relatively small planet like Mercury. And so theoretically, if someone were to construct something like this, they would most likely need to destroy one of the planets completely. And so because this particular structure hypothetically could exist, in the last decade or so, we've actually had quite a few different encounters or quite a few different detections that some scientists explained as a potential detection of some kind of a megastructure, such as maybe an ancient Dyson swarm. The most famous example is right here. This is the famous Tabby star. Once again, a video in the description describes this a little bit better. But even as recently as 2024, we've discussed a study that reported a potential detection of several unusual stars that actually emitted infrared light kind of expected from a typical Dyson swarm. Once again, the video in the description talks about this more, but even here there were additional explanations suggesting that these were not stars, but possibly distant galaxies. But anyway, the point is that we had some detections that were difficult to explain, and so several researchers actually thought that maybe these were Dyson swarms after all. But the main point behind the most recent study, the study by Brian Lackey that you can find in the description, is to actually figure out mathematically if these structures can actually exist long term at all. Or just to rephrase this, is this megastructure sustainable or is this something that's completely unfeasible due to various properties around stars and due to certain laws of physics? And I guess a bit of a spoiler, his conclusion is that Dyson swarms are most likely impossible. And if they do exist, they would require a tremendous amount of support and tremendous amount of maintenance, which kind of contradicts a previous assumption that one day we might discover some kind of an ancient civilization that must have existed millions of years ago and have potentially gone extinct but left behind its megastructures. And so the conclusion from this paper is that it's basically going to be impossible. We're extremely unlikely to discover any megastructure from any extinct civilization for reasons we're going to discuss right now. And this paper is super detailed in trying to explain all possible effects that a typical Dyson swarm is going to experience once it starts orbiting the star. Now here because we're talking about millions or possibly even billions of individual elements, 
each of them has to have a certain type of an orbit in order to prevent collisions. And because most of them are going to be small enough, they will unlikely to influence each other. But if this is a binary star system, or if there are any other planets in the system, such as for example planet Jupiter in the solar system, here every single element will start experiencing a type of a three-body problem. The orbit will actually start to slowly get more chaotic and will eventually create too many unpredictable elements, dramatically increasing the chance for a potential collision with something else. And so according to the math in the study, in a typical binary system or in a typical system containing a planet, within just a few hundred thousand years, maximum a million years, there will be at least a few possible collisions, with one collision most likely cascading into a kind of a chain reaction. When it comes to planet Earth and the satellites in orbit of planet Earth, we usually refer to this phenomenon as the Kessler syndrome. Luckily we haven't reached that yet, but as more and more satellites enter the orbit, the chance for a cascade of collisions increases dramatically. Although, unlike planet Earth, where most satellites stay in orbit for possibly just a decade, here the expectation is that these satellites will probably stay around for hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of years. Because the whole point is to try to create as much energy for an advanced civilization as possible. And so naturally the only solution in this case is to create some kind of a super complex self-correcting mechanism. Or essentially the swarm would most likely require a very complex guidance system that has to self-correct for thousands of years or even longer. And so assuming that the civilization doesn't exist anymore, this swarm will probably fall apart pretty quick. And so one potential resolution here for some kind of a super advanced civilization is to um, basically destroy all other planets. As scary as it sounds, if the advanced civilization can basically sacrifice all of the other planets and maybe turn them into even more of these probes or more of these satellites, in that case, they might achieve a much longer stability, or at least a stability when it comes to this three-body system. However, there are some other issues. For example, there is something known as the Kozai mechanism, also referred to as Lidov Kozai mechanism. And in essence, this is a kind of a gravitational oscillation that you can kind of see visualized right here in this beautiful animation by Smadar Naos. And well, in essence, for a lot of different objects in a solar system, because of gravitational interactions with a lot of other stuff, many different objects, such as for example asteroids, will very often change between having a really high inclination and very high eccentricity. It's actually a really strange mechanism and it's kind of difficult to explain without math, but in essence here, a typical body with very high eccentricity, such as a comet or an asteroid, every few thousand years will change its orbit so much that instead of being super eccentric, it will actually become highly inclined. In other words, it introduces this very bizarre motion and very strange oscillation for each of those individual elements inside the Dyson Swarm. And so here, initially circular orbit with relatively high inclination, with time, will actually evolve to be very eccentric and thus start crossing paths with other elements, dramatically increasing the chance for a collision once again. And so because of these uncertainties with orbits, it would be practically impossible, even for a super complex civilization, to try to figure out how to have a perfect swarm that never collides. Unless, of course, once again, they find a way to basically destroy any other planets and any other gravitational bodies in the system, only leaving behind the star and the swarm. Which obviously raises the next question. Where exactly would they live? Because they would also have to destroy their home planet. And so here, for most of the star systems, especially binary star systems, this cascading collision happens within just a few thousand years. It's impossible to avoid. And that's not even the only problem. The other problem is the star itself. And here it really depends on the star, but basically all stars will also produce a bit of a push, which for a typical asteroid often results in what's known as the Yarkovsky Drift. And this Yarkovsky Drift or Yarkovsky Effect basically pushes asteroids and causes their orbits to change. In essence, this is the result of photons from the Sun heating up one of the sides of the asteroid, which basically causes the surface of the asteroid to act as a tiny rocket engine. And so in a solar system, for example, it's extremely difficult to predict an actual orbit of an asteroid for longer than a few hundred years. And that's because they're going to change their orbit no matter what. Something similar is kind of expected from one of these elements in the Dyson Swarm as well. The re-emission of photons and the irradiation of the heat will actually create a tiny thrust that over time might change the motion of each of the elements just enough to destabilize them once again, creating additional uncertainties 
and additional problems. And so here, depending on the type of the star and the emissions from the star, it might influence the Dyson Swarm through a lot of these additional effects. At the same time, the star itself is not really a perfect sphere. For example, because of the spin, usually most stars are spheroids. Basically, they look something like this. And that means that their gravitational field is also not spherical either, and most stars will contain gravitational variations, especially for different swarm elements orbiting in the polar orbit. And so even here, there are going to be additional elements that are just going to increase uncertainty too much. Not to mention that there's also the fact that solar weather and solar wind is kind of unpredictable. For example, every single time there is a coronal mass ejection, especially around more powerful stars, such as flare stars, we can kind of expect the mega swarm to drift just a little bit as well. And so here, unless there is really some kind of a perfect maintenance system, all of these satellites are just going to eventually collide and are not likely to be in a permanent orbit. And according to this study, the limit seems to be around a million years. No matter how few planets it contains, after a million years, the mega swarm is going to disappear. And so here, on cosmic timescales, these would be very short-lived projects especially without some kind of an advanced upkeep that can somehow maintain our orbit and prevent any collisions. Which, by the way, would be very inefficient and actually cause even more energy loss over time. And after millions of years of collisions, we basically expect nothing but microscopic particles to be left behind. Mostly because once this Kessler syndrome starts, it's going to shred apart pretty much everything and these larger satellites will become just tiny particles. And that's because the collisions in this case would be in tens of kilometers per second. Possibly even higher if this is a smaller star such as a red dwarf. And so this study makes a pretty strong argument that, well, first of all, we're extremely unlikely to find some kind of an ancient civilization megastructure from aliens that existed millions or even billions of years ago. And second of all, even if these structures do exist, they can only persist for as long as there is active maintenance. If the civilization is still using them and is actively maintaining their orbits, it might be possible. But because overall this would be a really inefficient way of capturing energy, just because basically you have to destroy everything else in the star system, chances are Dyson Swarms might not really be efficient and useful after all. But we'll definitely come back and discuss this idea in some other videos, because there have been quite a few studies in the last few months. On that note, check out previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.